if you thought Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell were crazy before, we're about to play you some brand new audio that uh, has not been heard until uh, just recently in court. It's a jailhouse phone call where the two of them really think they're pulling one over on uh, the authorities that are listening in and investigators listening in because they're talking in code. Their code meaning we're going to use the word project instead of murder. And we're going to say all sorts of other weird HGTVS code words to pull one over on everyone. The fun part about this can whole. I, can I yeah. tell you something? Yeah. So when I heard this, I'm like, are they building a house? Mm-mm, yeah. I, well, you know, I was listening passively to it today, the testimony. And I was like, what are they talking yeah. about? And then I had to go back to the beginning and go, oh. They're talking about their projects. And the whole context of this is they're talking to the ghost of Alex Cox. <laughs> that's Oh, no, I missed that. That's the other kicker. So when they're talking about texting, oh, God. they're talking about texting. They're talking about talking to the deceased Alex Cox and that Chad has a text message relationship with him. Oh, oh my God. He should be on your ghost story podcast. Oh, I know. I mean, yeah, it, it just makes that even <laughs> what a missed freaking opportunity. crazier than it already is. Uh, but yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a listen here. This is uh, the beginning of Chad and Lori. Uh, and, and they use it. They use a different code name for Alec uh, or Alex as well. I, you'll hear it at the beginning. I thought my mind. I forgot what it was, but uh, we know it's him because he's used this name on emails and as an alias as well. So we know exactly who they're talking about. They're talking about talking to the ghost of Alex Cox. Let's take a listen. No, I texted Ray. He responded yeah. pretty quick. Oh, that's good. Usually it's hard to get a hold of him. It's busy. Okay. Days. Yes. Uh, he... It's hard to get a hold of him. It's hard to get a hold of the ghost. Sometimes is what Lori yeah, I thought it was a contractor. I'm like, yeah, they can be difficult to get a hold of sometimes. I feel like such an idiot. She says thinks it's hard to get a hold of the ghost. Yeah, it might be just a little bit. I asked him what we talked about. And he's very optimistic. It was very optimistic for you or he's very optimistic. It could happen. <laughs> he's very optimistic for both of us. He doesn't know his own project timeline. <laughs> he said stick with it. You know what? What he projected in that paper he wrote. So he's optimistic about his construction problem or construction <laughs> problems. Not problems, but plans. Yeah. His construction plan, the blueprints are still intact. Yeah. They're timing. And I kind of just said, I texted him what you just said is you guys are always a little off. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we just want a real estimate. Right. What did he say? He just laughed. He did, not, he, did not, he did not confirm nor deny that fact that contractors are always oh, no, later than they think they're going to be. He's like, you know, it, it'll work out, you know, how he is. He did, he did want me to say he misses you, but he's not far from, you know, contact. We can talk. We can text him whenever he wants. Yeah, I can't text anybody. <laughs> Have text. It was, you text for me. That's like me telling you I need you to tell this person and talk to this person. Like I went all kind of like Teresa Caputo on him uh, there. Like, ah, uh, yeah, you know, uh, he says he misses you, and uh, you can text him anytime. <laughs> oh my god, I I feel so stupid, Tony. I really thought they must be building a. No, no, they're talking about murdering people. But, but I heard blueprint and contractor, and I'm like. Oh my God. Well, they believe that These Alex people are fucking crazy. Well, yes, that's been established, but they believe that Alex is out on the other side and he's looking at and he's helping them with the projects, which makes me also wonder, uh, did Alex Cox die of natural causes or did he kill himself thinking that I'm going to go to this side of the veil and I'll help you out over there. By the way, he liked the uh, the video project that was made for him for his funeral. I'll text him back. Yeah, he's optimistic. That's, I mean, I want to go visit him and grab him by the throat and say, really? <laughs> I know he's optimistic, but can he just make us any guarantees? I mean, we did make our down payments and <laughs> everything else. Guarantee. It was like a guarantee, just an end date of our project. Well, he knows you pretty well. He just laughs. You know, he's 
I asked him what he thought of the video project. He said it was really nice. He loved it. Oh, that's nice. He said he, he loved the video project where they kind of, I guess it was, I believe, uh, Melanie, I think, put together, somebody uh, put together a uh, like a video compilation of, you know, you have at a funeral of, you know, pictures of his life and then you put it to, you know, <laughs> I wonder what music they chose. Josh Groban, you raised me up. Yeah, you um, raised me up. Yeah. So my question is this. I I have an iPhone through AT and T. Is this a T Mobile kind of a texting? I mean, what what company can you text uh, your dead relatives through? Is it U.S. Cellular? It's only U.S. Cellular. Oh, that's it. That's the only one. Yep. Um, it it just gets crazier and crazier. Um, they start talking about you know what what kind of percentage of a chance do we have here of getting in trouble? It's good to talk. You know, I hadn't texted him in a while. So he would still answer all my questions in the same way, you think, if I texted him? Um, I think you ought to write down some questions for him and maybe even mail him off and see what happens. If he'll respond to you. I I have no doubt. Um, don't forget President Holland's talk. That snippet. He seemed like he wants to text you if he could. Yeah, that, it's all true. That's all I can say. No, he's still very interested. He hasn't like forgotten about us. Remind him when you do text him back that at the beginning of this project, he said there was only like a three percent chance that there would be trouble from certain aspects, and then there's like a hundred percent trouble because that's where it all started. So. Find out about that. See what he has to say for himself on that. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. I do. You call what I'm talking about? Oh, no, I know exactly what you're talking okay. about. <laughs> I know what you're talking about, too. Yeah, killing your fucking kids is what you're talking about, yeah. you lunatics. Your fucking projects. My God. It's just disturbing how they're so just like jovial about all, because it's like, but they believe. You know, I, I think that they're, they weren't people to them anymore, at least not to Lori. I think Chad didn't give a fuck. I think he was ready just to kill whoever so he could fuck her. But uh, I, I think it's she truly believed, you know, these were projects and that these were the Lord's will that these people needed to die because you know, they're going to be reborn through uh, through her son or whoever the fuck is fucking somebody, maybe. Uh, but it, it's it's disturbing just how jovial they are about something that is so, so bad. Lori's wondering why things are going I so bad. I want to know why that is 100% instead of 3% chance of having a problem. <laughs> I think he was somewhat right in that. The other aspect were other people. It was a combination. I know it was a combination of other problems of the location, but what I'm saying is that it's a combination of only, you know, five problems. I agree. That, that was a big one. It was a big one. Uh-huh. <laughs> My faith in those kinds of guarantees are lower. And beggars can't be choosers. I get that. But you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's not like I get to pick the colors of everything that I want. He's just going to have to figure it out. <laughs> right. Since I'm here and I can't be in charge of the project. So... Yeah, and I've thought back on that entire scenario. When we went over the plan and the blueprint. Yeah, he said that wouldn't be a problem. The plan and the blueprint. Literally talk, like, their plan to kill all these people and the blueprint. And, yeah. well, the ghost said it wouldn't be a problem. Jesus. That's right. Um, I to take all that. Down. It was that. It really was. Right. No, I don't doubt that. It's just strange how it blossomed so go you go ahead no i'm just gonna say so you think it was meant to have complications and meant to go that direction at some point yeah well then you should have said hey this is a 99 <laughs> chance that we're gonna have trouble with this soil yeah right i mean that's all we were asking well could I... this potentially be good or do we have to fill it with sand well i think we sensed that we shouldn't take it lightly, and I don't think we did. I mean, we only discussed the matter with the trouble once, and I thought we cut it off and did well, and now that problem is kind of causing its own trouble for itself. Right. 
But there's other things in the project where um, when I'm going back over it, right, that I could have easily done or been inspired to do to avoid a lot of the issues that are going to come up with that. Yeah. That we weren't made aware of. So you see what I'm saying? Mm Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, I just kept blowing smoke up your ass to make you happy, and I said 3% chance, and that obviously didn't work out. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's God's will that everything went to shit, and you're in jail, and they're going to they're find the kids in the backyard melted into buckets. And uh, yeah, But it's, uh, it's, all, it's, it's all, you know, it's, it's God's work. It's what it's supposed to be. Da, 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 da. Can you imagine if Chad was charismatic? <laughs> Oh my God, he he could take over the world, you know. What an evil, evil human being he is. If he was only, if he only had a like an ounce of charisma, <laughs> but, but he just sounds like the biggest, dumbest oaf, and he could only get a few people to follow him. Thank God. Here's uh, more of Chad blowing. Know, yeah. I want to know what was going on with Lori. She seemed like a very good-looking individual. I don't know much about her personality. But that she got so intertwined with this guy who is such a dolt. Like, what about him made her feel like she needed to go along with him? Because he's not charismatic and he sounds dumb as a stump. So what made her go, ooh, this is it. This is the one for me. Well, I think she got the emotional food that she needed from him and he just basically went along with every crazy thing she said and it kept getting crazier and crazier. Then he kept making more shit up and saying, Oh, you know this, you know this about this prophecy or that we're going to be, you're going to be the queen. Oh my God, I'm going to be the queen. And she's got an IQ of seven. And, uh, Oh my God, you're going to be the queen of, of the world and 144,000. You're going to rule this out of Rexburg. And all I got to do is have sex with this uh, adult over here. Okay. (laughs) Wow. I think that's really it. I don't think I I think sometimes we overthink it sometimes. She's an idiot. He's an evil idiot. And the two just, you know, they just worked. Here's uh, more of Chad blowing smoke up Lori's ass uh, talking about uh, his communications with uh, the ghost of her brother, Alex Cox. Your purpose is only beginning. It's hardly begun. And it will be the pair. It won't be solo. It's going to be incredible. Be cholo and not solo. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yep. It will be the Eurythmics. No yeah. solo careers. I'm just absolutely sure. I was saying it will be the Eurythmics. It won't be two solo careers. <laughs> I like the uh, the Eurythmics. Uh. <laughs> so you won't be Annie Lennox by herself. <laughs> It'll be the Eurythmics. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Yeah, the main dream is, baby. You, said you have absolute what? Confidence? Absolute assurity, confidence, confirmation. It's going to be as seen. There's some things that aren't going to be altered. Your value is tremendous, immense, and needed in every way. You're tremendous, my love. I know that is a fact. I think you are... You underestimate yourself. I'm not trying to give you a big head or ego because you don't have one. You just are spectacular. And the Lord is going to use those talents who are on earth at this time for that purpose. I'll try to call you back so we can pray. Okay. Enjoy the upcoming flames of hell, Chad. <laughs> My God, they can roast marshmallows over it. Oh, you can probably roast them over them right now. I mean, holy shit. Yeah. So that's that's your answer, because he said shit like that to her over and over and over. Very unhealthy individual. She's unhealthy. And, you know, most sane people, if you talk to Lori after a little bit, you're like, she's out of her fucking mind. <laughs> Not Chad. Uh-uh. Chad thinks he's uh, she's just wonderful and amazing, and, and he could control her any way he wanted. 
And that's how you get Chad and Lauren. The storm, baby. Wait for the storm. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.